Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to have a very candid conversation, I would say, about my journey as a self-taught developer, my experience, really how I became a self-taught developer and uh, what I would recommend to you. Before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thank you for being amazing. Okay, let's get started. I wanted to sit down and have a really candid conversation with you because I feel like a lot of you, um, just like myself, are going about the same path that I did where you are teaching yourself how to code, had no prior experience, had no schooling experience for coding, and want to get a job, not only a job, but a really awesome job and make a lot of money and have this whole new career. And it totally is possible now thanks to thanks to the internet and being able to take different courses online for free and really everything that is accessible through our fingertips now, which is pretty amazing. So I wanted to share with you my story and how I got to where I am now as a software developer and technical consultant at IBM and also, of course, a YouTuber who talks about coding and tech and makes tutorials and all that stuff. When I first, I guess we gotta first go back to the beginning, not the beginning, but a ways back. When I was graduating from high school, I knew I wanted to do something that was hands-on, that I felt like I was creating and building different things, and also too, that I felt like I didn't have a limit on how much I could make. If I worked hard, I'm, such, I'm a really hard worker, and one of the things for me is I didn't want to constantly working hard only to know I could achieve so much, uh, especially with income. And that was something I was constantly looking for, like what would be a good career path for me? At the time, like many of you I'm sure, I didn't even really think of coding as a career path that I'd want to go down or even an option. I don't even know if I really had thought about coding at all. So I went to school for fashion and it was good. It was great because I learned a lot about, um, you know, I guess the fashion industry and also to, I learned more than anything what I didn't want to do. And what I mean by that is I loved it and I learned a lot, but I knew this isn't something I wanted to do forever. And then as many of you know, and I won't go into detail about my whole story again, and I'll link some videos down if you haven't seen them that I do go into more detail for them, but I ended up moving to Hong Kong, lived there for a year for some modeling and still was in the fashion industry, which was really exciting and a lot of fun. But when I came back and I knew I wanted to get some schooling and uh, pursue a different industry, it still was not coding. I still did not know I wanted to get into coding. So I went to school for graphic communications management and it was there that it was my last year I was exposed to coding and I fell in love with it. I thought, this is amazing. It's a skill you can build, whatever comes to mind. It's like a superpower and you know, you can work for a company and make a lot of money, but then you can also work for yourself and make a lot of money or do both. Not like it's just about money, but just the freedom it brings for you, even to work from anywhere, was pretty cool. So let's kind of dive in though, now that you know a bit of my background, as to how I became a self-taught developer. My first thing I did was I started with the basics, the very basics. I didn't know even really about front-end or back-end or anything like that. So if you know that, you're, you're doing better than I was. I just started with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Well, first HTML and CSS, and then JavaScript. I had a lot of trouble with JavaScript, a lot. Someone coming from no tech background, no coding background, it was hard for me. I struggled a lot and I questioned a lot, why am I doing this? But I kept on coming back to it because I knew once I, had, once I went across the bridge or pushed through to the other side of this learning curve, I would be so happy I stuck with it. And that's something I really want to highlight to you all because I get a ton of messages from people being like, I wanna learn coding or I am learning coding, but I want to give up. And my biggest piece of advice is be kind on yourself and take a step back, but keep on going. If it's something you're passionate about, you will, it will click and you will get there and you will be so happy you did not give up. So I started with JavaScript, really liked it, Took some, I, I used different, re, I used Udemy a lot. Udemy, YouTube, even W3 Schools I used quite a bit to understand the basics. And I hit a roadblock though at a certain point where I knew that I needed some more, more support with my learning. 
From there, I went to a coding boot camp, Brain Station, and it was a great experience going to a boot camp, and maybe some people would consider that not self-taught, but I still think it's kind of in that realm because I was learning a ton every day and still teaching myself. I had the support of the boot camp, but you know, it's a 10 week, 12 week boot camp, 10 week boot camp actually. So it's really just such a blip in your coding journey. Uh, but it was a great resource and support system that I needed. But after I graduated from the coding boot camp, I still felt like I needed to continue to learn. So after I learned JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, I went to learning React. React was super popular and it still is really popular, but it was like, in React's prime back then. Now I feel like Vue is really popular as well. And uh, so I learned React, struggled so hard with learning React. Once again, thought I should just quit, but I didn't. Thank goodness I didn't. And once again, if you are feeling that way, just keep on going. So once I learned React, I thought, this is all great and everything, but I really wanna dive into the back end and what it has to offer. So from there, I learned Express and Node and loved it. Like it was, and I still do, I just think it's the best. It's, you get into a rhythm, you get your music on, you get coding and I don't know, it just kind of transports you into your own kind of world. And I just, the back end side of things is, is really fun for me and I really love it. Um, so I found my sweet spot there. It was about, since the time it took me to learn code to getting a job, I would say is about four, four to five months, but my first job was as a QA, it was not as a developer. But I knew when I did that, that it would lead to a developer role because it was with a small startup and I just knew that this would, would lead to a, a developer role. So I took the QA job and continued to teach myself how to code. And then from there, I just pushed and pushed my managers to be like, please let me let me pick up some coding tickets, let me, you know, become a developer, and they did. And it was in PHP, so once again, I felt like I was starting from scratch because I didn't know PHP, but I think throughout my entire coding journey and coding career, one thing I've learned is be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Stick to your gut instincts. If you feel like you should be doing something, just keep on pushing forward, but take breaks and be kind to yourself. And the other biggest thing is you deserve to be there as much as everyone else. And I think that's so important to remember because so many times I would think these people are so smart, they're way smarter than I am, I could never do that. And it's a myth, it's a total lie. Of course, there are people who are smarter than other people, but on average, these people like you're working with, they're not that much smarter than you or at all, or you're probably smarter than them. They just have more experience. So I really wanted to highlight that because that really helped me overcome imposter syndrome with learning how to code is that if they can do it, so can I. If they can drive a car, so can I. If they can put on their pants, so can I. Like what makes them special? I can do it too. And that really helped me by just staying focused and realizing if other people can do it, well, why can't I? And from my startup days, then I moved to, I applied to um, where I am now at IBM and it was some technical interviews, some personal interviews, it was really, really great interview process but it was nerve-wracking the nerves i put on myself um, and once again went through that stage of being comfortable or learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable i remember after one of my interviews i cried not because of how the interviewers were but just because of how nervous i was so yeah and now here i am ibm software developer technical consultant and who knows what will be next I guess the point of this video I'm really trying to hone in on is stick with your gut, keep on pursuing what you are interested in and you will get there. I just get so many messages of people who give up or decide that you know they can't pursue it anymore because they're not smart enough and these are all myths that you make in your head or society puts on us. You can do whatever you want to do and I'm telling you this firsthand. If I could get to where I am now, you can too, I promise you. I'm sending you all so much love and encouragement on your journey and I want to be here to help you with any kind of aspects you need. So leave in the comments other videos or questions you have that you want me to answer and as always I will do my best to do so. I hope this video was valuable and supportive and helpful for you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.